Hello, I'm delighted to welcome everybody in this discussion how the Frank Franco-German axis can reinvigorate Europe. Uh, I'm extremely honored to talk with, uh, to welcome Mr. Sebastian Roth. I couldn't imagine a better person to really analyze the subject with. He's uh, the director of policy planning at the Federal Foreign Office of Germany. Welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, so let's start from the obvious, but sometimes really necessary. The obvious is really necessary. What does reinvigorating Europe look like? What does it mean in the, in the current world order? Well, um, I think the, the first um, mission, so to speak, um, the, the European Union has to undergo is to get out of the crisis um, that is triggered by um, the COVID pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. That is not only a health crisis, but also, of course, an economic and a social crisis. And I think in this regard, um, what uh, Germany and, and France uh, proposed um, uh, um, approximately one year ago um, with regard to the next generation EU fund, which is to be put online within the next weeks from now on was a real uh, breakthrough in this regard and the paradigm shift and uh, what we see already in some of the um, macroeconomic figures within the European Union is that um, um, even if the money is not yet spent, it already has a certain stabilizing effect with regard to the expectations of the economic actors and that the um, um, growth rates and the projections are rather positive. And I think that this very close Franco-German coordination in preparing this package was very instrumental also in um, formulating an economic uh, answer to the crisis that we are still in. Do you agree with the statement that the Franco-German relationship is the most important uh, relationship in the EU and why? Some people do not agree with that, at least now. Um, if you, if, I mean, as, as, as France and, and Germany politically always have a bit of a challenge in their cooperation within the European Union, if it works too well, some other member states are not very happy with it because they feel or might feel excluded. If it not works at all, everybody is complaining that it's not working and that um, the, the Franco-German motor is, is, not, is not pushing forward the integration project. So I think um, what I'd like to express is it is extremely important for the European Union. You can see it in all the figures economically, if you see defense spending, if you also um, look that both countries are um, leading countries within the G7 framework, for example, France is in the um, Security Council of the, of the United Nations, but Germany still is the fourth or fifth biggest economy in the world and will be the only European economy in the top 10 by the end of this decade. So um, the, the combination of these two countries ex is extremely important. But um, it should never be uh, an exclusive uh, relationship. It should be, and it is, an inclusive relationship that is an invitation also to other member states to participate. What about Angela Merkel's departure? It will leave uh, a great void. Will France um, be left alone in the Europe's uh, center stage? Um, I think um, probably the concept of a void does not really apply in political terms. Um, there is no void in, in politics. It is always, it will always be filled what we might lack um, probably also with the perspective from the outside is um, a, a leader that somehow we are all we, we all get used to and he who, who 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 is and who was then in september or october a very stabilizing pillar within the european family but you can be sure that for each and every german chancellor um, regardless of which party he or she is coming from, France is always the most uh, important and, and closest uh, friend and ally and 
I would even say the the first destination of the first official trip uh, abroad after being then uh, elected or nominated as chancellor. So um, I think um, France will not be alone. France will have a strong partner in Berlin who will uh, have a known also agenda um, for the European Union um, that is to be implemented with France, but not only with France, but with all the other 27 member states as well. Some people believe that the Franco-German axis is back in operation due to the pandemic. Has the pandemic restarted uh, this uh, motor after years or of uh, dysfunction and crisis? It's not a secret. Well, as I said, I think in economic terms, uh, it really um, led to a sort of uh, paradigm shift, um, especially uh, here in the German discussion, the fact that we are um, now putting together a package of uh, 750 billion euros, and I think Daniela Schwarz alluded already to this, um, is, uh, is and was a very big step uh, for Germany. Um, so in this regard, of course, the crisis uh, brought us even closer together. But I think that um, it was not only the crisis. Um, first of all, if we look back, we are looking back to a more than a decade of crisis, starting with 28, 29, and the financial crisis and the Eurozone crisis, where especially Greek, of course, was very heavily affected. Um, and I think in this decade of crisis, um, the um, German-French um, cooperation and, and relationship was very instrumental to steer the European Union through these uh, heavy waters. Um, and I would like to make a second point more in geopolitical terms that I, I think also the, um, the term of, of Donald Trump as president in the United States made clear both to the political um, elites and, and, and uh, leading politicians in France and Germany that um, this bilateral relationship between France and Germany is so instrumental in geopolitical and geoeconomic terms also with regard to what we um, have as a project that we call European sovereignty, so a European, a real European capacity to act in a fast uh, changing world in geopolitical terms. And I think this also pushed us even closer together. Some people say not fast enough though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, speed is of the essence, but um, you have to um, bear in mind that um, we are still two um, uh, different uh, countries, two diff different uh, governance systems, um, Germany with a um, federal system, a coalition government, strong uh, Länder, uh, Bundesländer, strong regions that all have their say, especially with regard to France, we have some Bundesländer in the western part of our country that are more connected to France than probably to Berlin. So uh, we have uh, the Saarland, uh, we have um, uh, Baden-Württemberg, we have Rheinland-Pfalz, and they, they feel and they are very much um, intertwined with, 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 with France. And um, uh, I think um, when, you, when you take both the, the also domestic complexities in the political systems, you can always say that we are not fast enough, but I would say in the moment when really um, it, it, is, it is very, very necessary, very urgent, we always come very fast um, to a common, uh, to common proposal or to co common solution. And then we have the Brussels bureaucracy that sometimes slows things even more, right? Well, um, uh, bureaucracy um, uh, is, um, um, is important because they are um, the agents who have to implement also decisions. And I can understand that to forge a consensus between uh, 27 member states, um, between and in between the Brussels institution, um, it is um, a very um, precarious um, game of internal checks and balances also. And I think all in all, uh, we are um, doing not uh, so bad and we have to bear in mind there is no other political project in the world that has such a deep understanding of cooperation and political and economic integration than the European Union. And I think that's something uh, we can be very proud of. 
So you're saying the bureaucracy sometimes is, is a ple unpleasant but extremely necessary. I, th I think so. And um, um, if you if you compare, because we have this discussion sometimes here in Germany, really the number of civil servants or bureaucrats in Brussels, it is approximately the number, let's say, between 30 and 35,000 um, of, of, of a bigger German city. Uh, so that has the same number, more or less, as civil servants. And I think that's that's not really a, a, a very, very big number. And I think all in all, they are working very, very efficiently. OK. France and Germany have always played a major, a huge role in European um, integration. Can a Franco-German axis save European integration? Um, I mean, safe integration means that it is really in peril and um, uh, under a lot of pressure. Um, you know this famous quote from, uh, from Jean Monnet that the European integration process is like a bicycle, so you have to move it forward in order not, not, to, fall, not to fall down. And I think it is, it is important to, to keep up the momentum. Um, and uh, to keep up the momentum you need uh, strong, strong players in Germany and France, but also like like Greece and other countries, are extremely important. And um, we just kicked off the conference for the future of of Europe on the 9th of May. Um, and I think this is, for example, one of the very important um, um, projects um, for the next um, years to come. And it it should um, deliver also some ideas by European citizens how to further develop and integrate um, and shape the European Union. But I, I could give you more examples also um, from the realm of, of defense and security. France and Germany agreed on, on very, very important um, defense uh, investments on a um, future combat air system, so um, a known um, a fighter plane, but it's more than a fighter plane that will be constructed jointly. And um, they also um, agreed on a, um, 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 a main ground uh, combat system, so a modern tank. This is, these are projects that um, take years and probably decades, but I think they are extremely important also for the integration process of the European Union as such and for all the member states. We're talking about France and Germany, but some tend to focus on a Paris-Rome axis, especially after Merkel's departure. Do you think that um, could Draghi and Macron become Europe's new power couple? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I wish so. We need as many power couples uh, as, as possible. As possible. <laughs> as possible, yeah. So, um, um, and the interesting thing is that there is really a growing um, trilateral cooperation also between France, uh, Italy, and Germany. Um, if you look, for example, to Libya, where um, the three countries probably not always followed 100%. Uh, the same agenda, but I would say that within the last six, seven, eight months, there was a really uh, a process of convergence uh, in the geopolitical, in the security assessment, in the political assessment of the situation. And it is very, very important and instrumental that these countries, the three biggest countries in the European country, uh, in the European Union, um, align their positions and coordinate closely also with regard to um, the economic recovery. So we are um, extremely um, happy if um, the cooperation also between France and Italy deepens um, and, and goes forward. And as I said, we need as many power couples as possible. Will the after Merkel era change the sometimes uh, competing visions of uh, Germany and France? Um, it, I think it very much depends, of course, on the on the person who will um, who will also follow uh, Chancellor of the new Martin, leader, but I don't, German leader. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think that the visions are so different. Um, and I alluded to this term of European sovereignty, Europeans' capacity to act. I think there's a clear understanding both in in Paris and in Berlin, in, in France and in Germany that we are living in an extremely fast-changing political environment globally. So if you look, for example, to China, but also if you look 
to the broader Asia, um, let's say, theater. Um, both Germany and France developed, uh, for example, an, an Indo-Pacific strategy. We call it Indo-Pacific guidelines. And now, um, because we think that um, there is an Asia beyond China, and if you look, for example, to the ASEAN countries, we have 620 million people, a fast-growing middle class, a lot of economic dynamism, innovations, technology. And I think there's a clear understanding, both in France and Germany, that Europe has to invest more in this region, has to develop an own strategic footprint in this region also, has to deepen its partnerships, economic partnerships, also security partnerships, um, sustainability partnerships with this region. And in this regard, I think um, that we are singing along the same sheet, um, and this is more or less uh, regardless who will be the next uh, leader in Germany, because the geopolitical, geoeconomic interests are so comparable. We tend to focus on the elections, the German elections. What about uh, the elections uh, in France in one less than a year? Yeah, that's um, that's always a very um, interesting um, period in in France. Um, we I think can expect that uh, Macron will um, try again um, to win the presidency, and then it depends very much on the other side um, of um, of the political spectrum who who will be his um, his um, 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 uh, how should I say. Um, opposite uh, candidate um, in, Le in Pen this, is in this gaining challenge. popularity as you know Le Pen is gaining popularity that's, as you know that's that's what I that's what I read as well but um, um, I mean um, we have to wait how the situation um, develops but um, you have this um, majority voting system in France and I think um, for the time being I haven't seen at least any poll um, where uh, Le Pen is is, is uh, strongly above fifty percent. That does not mean no, that we, that, we, that, that we should be uh, too relaxed uh, and and not not uh, not be concerned also about the the political um, developments there. And uh, I would say in general with regard to populist uh, right wing voices uh, in in Europe because they are very dangerous for the European. Um, integration um, process, but I'm very trustful that um, the French will take a very wise decision and that then France and German cooperation will continue. Uh, unfortunately, this is my last question because we're out of time. Can you name some of the factors that could affect, that could possibly affect uh, the mutual trust and the cooperation, cooperation between Paris and Berlin in the near future? <laughs> That's a difficult question. I know. I think there, That's you, you, why you, it's you interesting. Always have, <laughs> you always have have the the, the standard uh, divergence. Um, I would say with with regard to the role of the state uh, in the economy, for example. Oh. Um, it, do you do you go for a very open um, um, economic model like the German one, or do you go for a still open model, but where the state plays a much more important role than in Germany, as, as, as we do in France. Um, do you, how do you look, for example, to the macroeconomic um, uh, um, uh, figures uh, like uh, the deficit and the debt? And in France, um, but also in Germany, um, the crisis, um, the COVID crisis led to um, a substantial increase uh, with regard to the debts. Um, so um, what does this mean, for example, with regard to the discussion about the future of the stabi stability and growth pact? And I think um, there it is very important that uh, Germany and France develop a common understanding uh, about, about this discussion and especially about the way how really to strengthen the competitiveness uh, of our economies in order to, to strengthen also Europeans' position in the world, also as an economic um, um, area of, of dynamism and, and, and growth. So um, I, I'm very optimistic that um, we are um, on, a, on a common position here, um, but um, um, there is also um, 
a different um, tradition and economic thinking in the economic discussion. And this is not a point of friction, but I think of continuous debate between um, the two governments. Mr. Roth, thank, thank you so much. It was a privilege talking to you. I think it was a really interesting uh, discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and all the best to Athens. Bye. Bye.